bit about issues per pertaining to children uh, and in kindling the volunteering spirit in people. We have with us Deepshika. Hi, Deepshika. Uh, she runs the editorial function for She the People, um, and she writes op-eds and conduct interviews facilitating holistic discussions on gender equality for She the People's YouTube channel. We have with us Ekta Vivek Verma. Hi, Ekta. Uh, Hi, everyone. She is the founder of initiatives in Invisible Scars uh, and Purnavira, and is the head of strategy for Good Universe. Ekta's work is uh, gender agnostic, and she works closely with state authorities and other NGOs, legal authorities, corporate schools and colleges, uh, and private citizens to help abuse survivors. Uh, and we have with us uh, Dr. Pragya Kaushik. She is an independent media educator. Uh, she delivers expert lectures for colleges and university students on soft skills, PR, and media literacy. Hi, ma'am. Uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Rupinder Olak. Uh, she is a gender expert uh, who has conducted research on social media, socio political, economic, and administrative issues, uh, violation of human rights of elderly population. And she's currently the head of department for public administration in GGDST College, Chandigarh. And we have, finally, we have uh, Ma'am Dipya Dibri. She's a counselor and educator who works in the domain of communications, personality development, and soft skills. And she has been working with school children for many years. So a big uh, welcome, a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, all of you bring a very um, diverse perspective to what we are going to talk about, but all these perspectives converge together in the same direction, which is, you know, ensuring online spaces are safe for our children and they lead a healthier and uh, safer existence. So uh, to, dive, uh, to dive right into it, we have a short presentation about the work CASR has done in the area of online safety for children, youth and women, and about our latest initiative, which is education and capacity building for parents, teachers, caregivers, and all stakeholders in the well-being of our children. So over to you, Shruti. Thank you, Jyoti. I hope I'm audible. Okay. So we are going to talk about our initiative that Jyoti just talked about, and that's digi digital safety and online well-being. So a little bit about our organization, that is the Center for Social Research. So we have been working closely with children and youth, especially girls and women, uh, for the better part of the decade. And the digital safety and online well-being is our flagship program, which has been engaging with children from the age group of 7 to 18 years in digital safety awareness. And we focus on research analysis and delivering engaging workshops to gauge and discuss the new realities and challenges related to the digital world with children through a keen lens of gender, safety, inclusivity, and capacity building. Uh, so we have gathered here today to talk to you about how parents, teachers, caregivers, and all stakeholders can help to ensure safer online spaces for our children. And why have we gathered here? Because uh, we actually, through our research, have seen that uh, one of the researches that Google conducted found out that around 72% of Indian parents expressed concern about online safety during the pandemic, especially as classrooms moved online. Around 38% of parents said that they are concerned about their child's safety due to issues like hacking, scams, alongside unwanted attention from strangers and circulation of inappropriate content. So a parallel digital existence has fast progressed from a future possibility to a current reality for our children. While they are using multiple digital technologies, it has further opened up the possibility of all kinds of dangerous situations, cyberbullying, cyberstalking, scamming, doxing, and many more. So moreover, educators, guardians, and all stakeholders, we remain a little ill-equipped with required knowledge and resources regarding digital safety to enable our children in the safe exploration of the digital world. So how do we uh, actually are approaching these issues by taking the three-pronged approach of research, awareness and capacity building with both children and with parents and educators. 
So here is a glimpse of our in-person workshops, which the team has been very happily conducting after the schools got back to normal and everything resumed. And CSR has also been actively advocating to include digital safety as a part of the educational curriculum in schools and colleges across the country, while engaging with children and youth through the training workshops with the gracious support of our policymakers. So this is a very small feedback, uh, which actually feedbacks are something that is a huge propeller under our wings. And here is one of them uh, from a school teacher. Uh, this is Vali Kanu, the head of administration from Subaya Central School, Tirupur. Uh, it was a pleasure to have uh, the cyber security session with our students today from CSR group. And uh, this session was uh, very important for children, especially during this pandemic situation where all of them are connected to their classes through the online modes. And not just the classes, now children have access to n number of online platforms, games, social networking sites, and a lot of other areas where they have to do things online, especially not just for them, for people at their family as well. So this, uh, uh, we are very thankful to CBSC for having uh, given this opportunity to associate with uh, CSR to do this uh, session for children, uh, because like uh, this is one of uh, a need of the hour. We are also immensely grateful to have support and collaboration from many partners, both national and international. So that's all from our side. Thank you so much. And over to you, Jyoti. Thanks, Jyoti. So uh, we didn't want to talk about what we are doing for a very long time. So this was just a very short excerpt. Otherwise, we can talk for days on end on the, uh, about the initiatives that we are uh, trying to, uh, yeah. So since you're all, um, you know, here, today to discuss how caregivers and stakeholders like ourselves can ensure safer online spaces for children, especially when the demographic online is becoming younger day by day and all our learnings and leisure activities have largely moved online. Moreover, even teachers, parents and guardians are trying to keep up with both upcoming technologies and children while navigating the online spaces. Uh, we as caregivers are also apprehensive and unsure regarding our children's exposure to dangerous situations and vulnerabilities of the online world. We are here to discuss perspectives of our panel and uh, on these issues and further engage you to formulate uh, alternatives and solutions. We, we need your inputs to formulate them better. So beginning with uh, you, Ekta. As a parent, you know, the struggle of the online world with regard to children, I'm sure you would have uh, many worries, but do you think you would be able to support your child better if you were better equipped with resources, more knowledge, better knowledge and awareness? Ita, I think your mic is, yeah. I'm muted by the... We can hear you. All right. Uh, so sorry. Uh, so thank you uh, for asking me this question first. Today I'm wearing two hats. Besides being the mother of a teenager who's grown from 13 to 16 during these COVID years, which have been, I think, the most terrifying years of my life. Uh, you know, I come as someone who watches what happens, uh, you know, when safety is not adhered to. So how do you bring a balance? I think that's the biggest question that we need to ask. So in these three years, I think I have had a lot of unlearning to do uh, with respect to my own child. Uh, I, I would always think that, you know, you can tell a child what to do. And then there are children of different ages. So mine was, uh, you know, sort of moving into teenage uh, where besides, uh, you know, having access to the internet 24 bar seven, uh, there are these teenage hormones also coming in and then there are the smaller kids. So you have to be very careful on how you approach these topics. But I think before everything else, the biggest learning that I had to do as a parent was to say that my child is going to use the internet no matter what I say, no matter what I do, I cannot take the child away from the internet. So now this is what it is. Let me try and work around it. Uh, so if I say, for example, had a younger child, it may have been a little difficult to explain certain things about safety because 
uh, with my daughter when I explained that, you know, sexual assault is real and these are things that can happen. And I gave her examples. What I realized is that she's listening to everything that I'm saying. Uh, but is anything really registering with her? Because as a child, maybe because they've grown up in such protective environments, so or some of them may have, right? It is very important that they understand what we are saying. So it's not just one-way communication. So whatever programs we design for them or whatever conversations we want to have with the child, whether the child is eight years old or five years old or 13 or 18, right? We have to have those conversations, age-appropriate conversations, and we have to ensure that they register. Uh, so for my daughter, for example, uh, we are tracking her phone. We are tracking her phone, but we don't look into her. Uh, we don't go into her social media. So we are giving her that privacy. She knows that my phone is being tracked, right? And she knows that she has privacy uh, to do whatever it is she wants to do on her phone. But at the same time, you know, we are not so worried anymore because we know that over a period of time, and you know, we did have lots of fights over why you're tracking my phone, you're taking away my privacy, so on and so forth. But we tried to find a middle way. So, you know, I think we are probably the first line of parents who's actually had to go through these whole two and a half, three years of online education and so for us also it's a learning process there was no hard and fast rule around it but we realized that the more you are forceful and argumentative the more the child is forceful and argumentative so you have to find a nice way to tell the children about these things and you have to share illustrated examples it's not just enough to say hey this can happen to you because it doesn't register to them uh, so when the dangers of the internet actually registered with my daughter was when she actually read about a case and how it had impacted somebody she knew and that's when she came back home and she said oh i'm really sorry you know i didn't realize this is what happens and uh, you know so it it was like a very difficult learning process but uh, we sort of implemented some rules and we said, look, we have to have a few rules in place, but the rest of it, you know, we will let go. We won't negotiate and talk about everything. But I think the most basic was to say that this is going to happen. The problem is when we don't accept that this is the reality of today's life, they are born with phones. The minute a child is six months old, we, we give that child a phone or we play music or we do something. So it's just a modern day life reality. I think it becomes easier for parents. Yeah, so true. Um, thanks, Ekta. These worries are mostly of almost all parents that we've connected with, you know, in the past. Uh, and so coming to the caregivers and uh, uh, parents and teachers module and the education materials that we built, it happened quite organically because this is what we have learned that, uh, you know, the first line of events is your family and they need to be equipped with the right tools to actually uh, talk to the student uh, talk to their children and you know equip them with the right tools because this has to start at home and at school at a very very uh, in, uh, like basic in, uh, education level uh, and so uh, you know coming to you uh, divya ma'am uh, we want to understand if things change you know in a school setup for our listeners here or for the people that have joined us for their benefit. From your daily experience of engaging with children, can you let us know the specific challenges that the schools had to face? I know we've talked about this many times before and we've understood these challenges. Hence, you know, uh, we introduced this new initiative. But we would like to hear this in this setup um, from you. Is Divya ma'am here? And, um, and as an educator, ma'am, do you think uh, digital safety awareness uh, sort of education would have a positive impact on the life of uh, children? Yes, sure. So uh, am I uh, audible now? Because I had to unmute myself that I to respond. Am I audible? Am I audible? Uh, am I audible? I'm not getting a yes, response. Yes, Please, yes, could you respond you to are. me? Okay. Yes, ma'am, you so, are. So thank you. Uh, right. So uh, the first part of it is that uh, the specific, uh, school uh, or educators uh, face. So yeah, definitely it was a challenge uh, to begin with. Uh, uh, we had to 
uh, very quickly at the school, the teaching staff had to very quickly first educate their own selves, you know, to understand the whole uh, scene that was uh, unfolding around them. So self-education, learning the uh, social media platform, learning uh, the use of technology was the first thing that teachers uh, had probably got to do, school had to get uh, start doing, and then had to, uh, and now we understood the environment better. And so now we could see the challenges of the students as well as the challenges of the parents that the parent just mentioned uh, right now. Uh, and uh, the school had a responsibility not just to take care of their own learning, they had a responsibility of, of you know, and learning, making learning, facilitating learning uh, for the students as well as the parents. The biggest challenge. Now let's take it up separately for students and for parents. So for students, what uh, was observed is that uh, not everyone uh, had access uh, to good internet facility. That was one thing. So there was disparity um, amongst you know the students itself to begin with that who was accessing more and who was accessing less as a result of this we had different grades and different levels of uh, exposure uh, children exposed to the internet so that was the thing that we had to deal with and at the same time bring all of them at par bring them all together on one platform so that uh, education or whatever that was happening at that point in time um, uh, could be continued in the best manner that it could uh, after that was taken care of, it was seen that even uh, everyone was not uh, literate enough, even um, students, not even was familiar to use, uh, use the technology or use the, uh, use the opportunities that were opening up to them with the access to online platform that they were having. So that was another thing that had to be taken into account. And uh, apart from all of this, we had a set of children who having had the technology as well as the opportunity, internet, all of it did not want to come online. So there was a big challenge to motivate them well because the children, uh, really uh, did not want that online environment because adapting to a new environment was the big thing for them. So that was challenge students, the school was seeing that students are facing. Now the part of the parents, parents were suddenly in a space uh, unplanned. They were not prepared to let their children come online so soon, but it was thrust upon them. And coupled with that were a set of parents who were working, who could not only, really, you know, uh, uh, be with their children and uh, be present and guide them along as they were due to technology. So that was, uh, that was the thing. Now, these two things were happening. And there was another thing that was alongside. There was a group of parents who were not exposed to technology and could not very comfortably come on and use it and understand it the way their children were using it. So there was a widening gap between the child and the parent. At the same time, the parent was also very aware how, uh, how uh, the exposure was unlimited for their child and how all boundaries were being defined age, geographic, or any other boundary that existed in the real world were all being defined and the children were, children were at risk. Was, was the child aware of the risk that we involved? Was the child aware of the uh, privacy issues that we involved? Was the child aware of the, um, how inappropriate content could be, they could be exposed? Was the child, was the child aware of fake, real, differentiating between them? And also a lot of the scammers who were around, was the child aware of all this? These were the uh, dilemma that were running through the minds of parents. And they were actually uh, building up a societal anxiety, which again, the school understood and school had to pitch in, you know, by, you know, uh, by bringing in partners such as your own self uh, to, uh, you know, to bridge this gap and uh, take the whole community forward. Things were done, but I'm sure there's room for more. Uh, and uh, always, uh, this is a this is a space which has to be revisited time and again because technology is ever advancing and ever changing, and everyone has to really be on their toes and be um, uh, be equipped to deal with it and handle. It. So uh, that was the challenges that I was seeing. And now, how was uh, how would uh, being informed better and uh, upgrading your own skills and capabilities? Uh, how would they help? And make a positive impact in the uh, life of the student. Well, uh, it uh, only can be said that unless the 
the tea community is not educated, unless the stakeholders are not educated enough, uh, they really cannot pitch in with the young learner. And how much do we think that the young learner is adept and is uh, very good at handling technology much better than much of, much of the others? They're still young. Uh, they are still younger in age and uh, not qualified, mature enough to handle the different challenges that means uh, exposure to the wider world with exposure to a uh, uh, range of uh, to the community which ranges from uh, all uh, with uh, which ranges or with, uh, which is uh, which is a blend of all kind of people good and bad so i think definitely it will make a positive impact to yeah have, yes uh, to be 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 better equipped better trained thank you thanks for those uh, very special inputs man uh, i want to quickly you know uh, talk about the fact that there has always been a gap in access and opportunities for children coming from different backgrounds. Uh, but with the advent of the internet, there is an opportunity, you know, to reduce this gap. And which is where you come in, Anupama. Uh, since you and your organization work closely with children, largely from the underprivileged section of the society, can you shed light on the impact uh, lack of access opportunities and digital technologies has had? And if yes, uh, then what socio-emotional challenges came to the fore at, uh, due to the same and what could be the way forward? And the importance, you know, of uh, people like us, people like you to be very, very well equipped and updated on how to handle uh, the recent set of issues that the uh, kids group must be facing. Thanks a lot, Jyoti, and thanks for inviting me. This is a wonderful, uh, very pertinent and uh, topical thing which we have picked up. Um, I was listening to what uh, Ms. Dembri was saying and so many, you know, relevant things which we realized over the course of the last two or three years. Um, let me just, you know, pick up one or two data which, you know, we typically deal with when we work as cry with our children that, you know, if you look at the recent NSS report and the usage and the internet accessibility of a country like India, anyway, the numbers are pretty low. Um, it might be around 24% of Indians who have access to internet and when it goes to rural areas, it, you know, sharply drops to around 15%. So that's one big reality which we have to keep in mind and why I say so because COVID had literally overnight overturned how we were you know, interfacing with uh, technology and digital spaces. Secondly, among the number of users online, a huge number who are increasingly becoming very prominent in composition are the children. Uh, you know, quite unbelievable, but um, you know, even below the age of 12 years, there are 70 million plus, you know, children who are using internet or rather have access to it. Now, when we look at these numbers and, you know, there's one thing which I keep hearing that, especially in the privileged segments that, oh, you know, children are digital natives. They are far, you know, savvier in terms of using internet. Now, that's slightly problematic. Uh, the reason being that it is for us, it is for children like ours who have access to internet very easily. But then the country which we live in and the country which we belong to, they come from different backgrounds. And so somewhere we are exaggerating the ability and the understanding of these spaces, right? When it comes to communities and especially the most marginalized whom CRI works with. Um, so this inadequate digital access is something which CRI has always been quite tuned to. The past two and a half years has taught us that how it can sort of widen the gap between the people who can afford, uh, you know, a system where the children learn from and children who do not have access to. And the reasons being that, you know, poor connectivity or lack of devices to get online, expensive mobile data or, you know, smart access to smartphones or the remoteness, right, of where they stay. And so the impact, the marginalized groups and their children, the impact was far harsher than when we compare it to the so-called urban realities and the privilege. And it impacted on many counts, as you said, Jyoti, social emotionally and as well as learning. So when we were in school and the kids literally, you know, had to, uh, you know, just come online and attend classes or get access to reading materials and read it up, it was so challenging because they come from backgrounds which are anyway socioeconomically disadvantaged and then remoteness, then limited access. And then imagining that they are learning was a huge challenge where we found that many children were prone to the risk of dropping out. And that 
if you look from a gender lens, we found that girls in a family were having decreased access to a gadget. So if you look at the number of people using a mobile, the numbers are pretty high. But when the communities we work with, a single family was using one mobile set where there were two, three kids that they all had to learn. The father was working and he was carrying the mobile. So the only time when they were able to access a mobile to you know, get online and do something was very limited and girls were anyway dropping behind. A very interesting study we had done last year with this, uh, which was essentially to understand the experiences of you know, social emotional turmoils and stressors uh, when uh, children were not in school and they were like pulled up inside uh, due to COVID. And um, a very stark data which was coming out was that most of the children were saying that it really disrupted our routine and our plans and our dreams. And the thing which they missed the most was being in school and meeting their peers, meeting their friends, learning from the teachers. So we have to be mindful of the fact that while the internet and the digital spaces are wonderful opportunities to learn and get connected, but then, you know, I remember one child saying during that study that, you know, all my zeal of study is gone because, you know, I have not been to school for months now and there are no more classes. And I feel extremely sad. And this wasn't just that girl. I remember she was from Moray in Manipur. There were so many such girls her age and boys her age who were saying the same thing. And hence, when we are looking at, you know, what are those measures we have to look at towards their overall well-being and learning? is that we have to be mindful of all these diversities which we are doing. Because, you know, the, the fundamental thing of that children were saying, Are didi, uh, charge karne ka hi mauka nahi milta because, you know, the our area has power cuts and we do not have adequate power supply. We cannot charge our devices. Imagine they are learning from a tiny mobile phone and picking up what the teacher herself is struggling with, that they are also getting used to the fact that, oh, we have to teach online. We have to get the children on board and make them understand stuff and then give them certain things to do as homework. And most of these children were coming from families who are first generation school goers. So the parents are not in a position to help or guide or check whether things are adequate, whether things are safe, right? So, and they do not have these personal devices. It's a collective uh, access to uh, one single mobile phone. So there the guidance which they would receive from school or at home, it becomes quite worrisome. Uh, just because imagine that how many of their parents are educated enough. So it's a huge challenge in itself that unless the parents who can guide that what they are doing or not doing online, whether they're exposed to social media, whether they are exposed to you know, having a mobile in hand, how to use it, what sort of information you divulge and is it at, you know, at the cost of risking themselves to, you know, go all out and making their credentials public. These were too new for them. So at CRY, when we were actually looking at these and our, you know, project partners and volunteers were doing these sessions, every time it was a process of, you know, reinstating that how important it is to be digitally aware. Because, and you know, it might be more, yeah, yeah, especially for uh, uh, the caregivers, as you said. Uh, exactly, because, you know, it, it is teachers. difficult because they do not know how to handle it. Yes. So constantly yes. drilling it through like ongoing sessions, it's not a one-time thing we realize that every time you meet, you tell them, Ye yaad rakhna hai, and these are the things you better be careful, tell your parents, yeah. or when yeah. you're meeting parents, telling them so, yeah, that while they're going you know, online. Yeah. Our yeah. experience has also been, which I said, you know, this organically happened for us also. We were targeting uh, uh, safety of children and ensuring that uh, we uh, give them the tools, empower them to stay uh, safe. But uh, what really came to the fore was that caregivers like yourself, uh, teachers, parents, we need to be better equipped to handle uh, how, and moving forward, the digital uh, existence, it's, it's not going to... Uh, like Ekta said, it's not going to be less. We need to acknowledge the fact that we cannot keep them away from the internet. Exactly. Access or no access. Even the kids um, we work with, with you know, limited access to uh, the internet, they found a way of getting online somehow. So they are always going to do that. And so we just want to uh, reinstate with your perspectives and with ours that caregivers need to be better equipped. And thanks for sharing this. Uh, we are already, I didn't even realize we are halfway through the uh, session already. So quickly, like coming to you, Dr. Rupinder, uh, please 
can you add to this you know since you uh, work with young adults with similar issues and uh, do you think lack of preparedness in the childhood in terms of digital world affects adults decision and life and well being yes definitely during their childhood listen their parents play a prominent role in shaping their identity they should tell them what is good and what is bad as we are already into um, awareing them about sexual uh, you know harassment sexual education so digital education should be the prominent part it should be the you know part and parcel of their lives so when uh, digital space acts as a habitual forming substance fine so when whatever they are doing in their childhood they shape their identities and habits they start performing the same things for example once a child is very used to of pornography like fine so he or she starts feeling that it is a quick way of making money easy way of making money so they deeply delve into uh, you know uh, making porn movie so that they could have easy money in their hands moreover what do they do they uh, during their childhood they are not being taught about that they should be a, a, you know uh, they should learn the art of managing the time while in the digital space this is where the parents and the educators uh, miss their duty so they should be given adequate knowledge that you should be able to manage their time in a well manner so it's not a one time go that you are telling them this is wrong and this is right and that is okay no you should them you should yourself in, indulge into such kind of practices because children are at a very tender age they are more eager they you cannot teach them they observe you in a well manner and they follow your footprints while in the uh, in the homes and in the uh, in the schools they keep observing you you cannot teach you have to practice the same thing what do what do i do in uh, in my college i take a session either uh, every week or in fortnight i keep on asking them what is the challenge they are following while they are in the digital space uh, i could share the example of a girl i won't disclose her name and the name of the institution where i used to uh, teach them uh, she came to me once she was from a very opulent family and but the family was very conservative she she you know she used to feel alone so she uh, had a good relationship with a male on the social media avenue they have some love love moments so what the boy started doing he started blackmailing her and she was like she was entirely disorganized her individualistic disorganization led to the family disorganization later on she eloped with the boy knowing that he was not a good person for her and that that wedding proved to be fatal for the girl she was killed so this is the problem that we need to tell the our children that it is their responsibility that they should be use the digital space in the appropriate manner this is a crime on the part of parents if they are not talking to their children in in, a, in the in the appropriate manner we first and uh, one one thing one more thing i feel like adding that it is not the sole responsibility of the parents or the educator it is a responsibility of the entire society definitely it's all of us it's on yeah. all of our uh, shoulders which is why you know no. we were gathered today uh, definitely very very important and a good example uh, maybe a little shocking but yeah uh, good example to just wake us up to the fact that the dangers that lurk online are seen many unseen and how it follows you in your uh, real physical life which is where the kids really need to be educated and us more than them now uh, and so coming to you uh, dr pragya media literacy has been a big part of the education that you are uh, providing uh, students and you have connected with a lot of school children can you tell us the most predominant issues uh, that like children that you have worked with face and you know as stakeholders to how do we fill those gaps in our communications with the children hi right. um, uh, good afternoon everyone uh, thank you tanya for the question uh, let me tell you first of all uh, when we talk about these issues we ourselves the parents mentors educators and uh, due to the pandemic also we have put our children on this digital platform for their studies and it was necessary also 
but simultaneously this exposure to this digital platform has raised many issues also like very first is demystification of the content demystification of the concepts the questions which they had in their mind now they are available on also social media or on, online also the plethora of information is there and the problem is how to navigate the authentic information or unauthentic information how to navigate myth from the reality so that is there comes the roles of role of the parents the teachers and educators to make them understand because information is available on the you know, internet wherever uh, whatever the purpose is whether they are they are using it for the studies purpose for the games or whatever it is but they need to uh, make them understand that they have they don't need to click on any kind of information whichever is coming to you how they can navigate it and how they should think critically about the information from where this information has come to you who has sent uh, them at what time it has come what platform has been used for that is it in the group is it individually being sent to them so these all are the training part which i am conducting with the school teachers with the students of the universities and colleges and with uh, like students also for the school but most of the time i conducted it with the teachers and they also came forward with this uh, many examples as ma'am has also given every day even during their classes in their whatsapp groups they are receiving such uh, in context such uh, links from there they are being said that if you will click you will get some uh, gift hampers and these clicks uh, these links are uh, actually the fake links were there yeah so uh, i think how do we uh, fill gaps uh, how do we do this for them uh, in your opinion again uh, the thing is uh, communicate listen to your children whether they are telling you something or not but make it a habit as ma'am rupinda ma'am has said in his uh, sorry in her college she is interacting with the students same way in the schools at home also we as a parents we as teachers we as educators must ask the students if it is happening with them is there any kind of unusual information they have seen or link and secondly awareness camps as we are conducting this webinar today same way in the schools and universities i and like me many other uh, trainers and educators they have conducted mm -hmm. and to be very frank till today i am receiving messages from all those institutions that today we are able to identify the myth and misinformation and authentic and unauthentic information there are tools also that is a technical part but when we talk about education this is totally about awareness communicate listen ask and willingly make them aware whether they are listening you or not but tell them the uh, small tips you can give instead of giving information like um, number of yeah. uh, so basically uh, talk with them don't talk at them and talk and uh, tell them also, yeah. tell them willingly tell them like yeah. don't share Open your channels OTP. of communication like, thank you so much for highlighting the uh, you know importance of communication with the children this is what we we mostly try to emphasize in our modules and trainings as well um, and so since we're talking about communication deepshika uh, hi so i'm sure you've read and you know you've reported on incidents on safety and privacy so many times in the past few years would you like to talk about any such incident and you know how can we avoid these in the future yeah so uh, you know some brilliant points were made here before about the you know uh, inadequate digital access and the difference between access and opportunity which is a huge thing and we need to address i however come from a little bit of privileged background where i have been able to work and my son has been able to go to school because you know i live a very urban life but there are there are things which we need to address not just in schools but uh, all all our social media platforms allow us to have uh, uh, profiles account from the age of 13 14 15 and these kids are very young you know at the onset of the pandemic two very uh, major stories which we reported on and which raised many question one was on instagram the boys locker room incident where uh, so many young boys were talking about uh, women about their classmates about uh, and and in language and addressing is uh, talking in a language which would never ever use in physical space so uh, uh, 
so a very important question here to ask as um, you know uh, guardians or people uh, as educators and uh, you know people who are responsible for them is that how is this anonymity on internet allowing them to use such language to normalize things like talking about sexual abuse or rape uh, a linked incident along with that was another one on snapchat where a woman was dress was pretending to be a man and checking out this guy whether he actually would talk about uh, plan a sexual assault on another girl and my god it would be uh, you know uh, it, it is it is really alarming that for women for young girls uh, this anonymity is making them cool feel like talking about sexual abuse this is this is something uh, i realized over my experience and as as a parent to a very young child also that uh, the younger you are the more equipped you are to handle and understand techno or not understand use technology the understanding and the responsibility only comes much later in life you know so uh, like ekta had mentioned in the onset that the internet is here to stay so we have to accept it first that there is no way we we can do away with internet or screen you know and and then we have to process two personal experiences here i'll quickly share is one when i i have a 7 year old child so i can monitor what he is watching on the on whatever device for whatever time but something which is when very unnerving for me is i cannot control the kind of ads which pop up am i ready to talk about a lot of issues a uh, lot of things that are being sold or shown on those ads i am not sure that he has the ability to understand or i have i have the uh, i i am equipped or i'm i'm ready to talk about these things right now uh that is another thing and another it's a personal observation i would say is the recent issue of you know uh, the media channels putting out the picture of uh, virat kohli and anushka sharma's daughter while they can go fight on inter uh, uh, take uh, fight a lawsuit against it but we all know when uh, something makes it to the internet there is no way that it can be deleted you know so that is where you know we are we as uh, elders or uh, we are as adults are all so irresponsibly using uh, the internet and uh, not giving that choice to parents who actually want to take that decision from them uh, for their children so uh, the second part of your question is uh, how in my opinion can these be avoided i don't know whether these can be avoided but there can be uh, there has to be a lot of awareness that needs to be created and all of us have pointed up uh, uh, pointed towards it you know that uh, every time uh, i see in the newsroom every day that uh, the younger the child the the intern is the the higher uh, you know the more equipped that person is into getting a story that is you know uh, unfolding somewhere you know uh, um, even even at home so uh, we have to be like constantly update ourselves as parents as guardians as educators that uh, we are able to be there with at their level and understand what is unfolding at that given point of time Shikhan, thanks for quickly putting your points across. We are we are very conscious of uh, the time here now. Uh, so you know we've heard perspectives of all our panelists, uh, and we would like everyone to outline very specific changes in their areas of work. Starting with you, uh, Anupama, um, what would you know enable a better relationship between caregivers and children, especially the ones that uh, you work with or your organization uh, works with? and to make a conducive learning environment we all we understood the issues and we we know access um, is a problem we know uh, the problems that the kids face they still find time uh, and they still somehow find their way on the internet so what do you think can um, enable a better environment for kids that you work with uh, and and the caregivers and the stakeholders that are in your um, you know uh, area right. of work yeah sure yeah as um, i think we all agreed that you know we are increasingly turning into this virtual space whether it's covid or you know the way our world is changing i think one of the very important matters one i think it's imperative that you know the significance of digital technology so this space is whether we are using it for learning or leisure it is quite imperative that the digital technologies right they are integrated to the overall policy priorities and 
the daily actions for children. We cannot look at both in isolation. It has to be club that, you know, when the merits of the internet, we cannot refute, right? But there are these risks of safety of what they are watching, what they are not, whether at the cost of risking their privacy, personal security, integrity of information, because they're leaving a digital footprint out there. So I think for a country like ours and that I, the communities we work with, we have realized that lot of awareness building at the level of caregivers, whether teachers and parents, because the moment they are ready and understanding how significant that is, that understanding will translate into students and their children, right? It won't be a one-shot thing that you tell children and be done with it. It's constantly that how teachers in their school spaces are building it up as part of their curriculum, as part of their regular discussions. At the home level, parents are equipped to even check that it's just not enough to say how much of time you are spending online, but it is also important what exactly you are doing being online. So are parents and teachers able to distinguish and explain it dearly to children? If that is taken care of along with larger policies, which increasingly are coming in, many of those are very proactive in terms of you know, children's security and privacy, uh, because most of the children even do not know that what's the right age to go on social media or what's the right age to have their personal yes. mobile sets. So even those simple hacks can go along. Yes, Mr. Yeah, thanks for uh, again emphasizing awareness and education that is really, really required uh, around this uh, area. And uh, so, um, uh, Ekta, would you like to give your perspective as, you know, as we uh, try to wrap this up? as to what alternatives parents can exercise and the most important thing that has come out of this discussion for you as a parent. Can you uh, unmute uh, Ekta, please? Ekta, I think, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you for the very, very interesting discussion. It was very good to hear all the viewpoints on this. Right. And I agree with all the fellow panelists that, you know, caregivers, parents, teachers all need to understand what's going on. So I will just respond with like a few quick points that I think uh, should happen. Uh, so, and this I'm taking cue from the POSH Act, you know, so whenever we do POSH trainings in organizations, the first thing is we tell organizations to put up posters all across the organization, have it there on their intranet, you know, people have to keep seeing, uh, you know, what is sexual harassment, what is sexual harassment, and digital safety is also the same thing. So I have not gone to a school where I have seen posters put up all over the school now that physical school has started and internet is a reality. So it's not that once we have gone to physical school, kids are going to go back in reverse and, you know, not use uh, the internet. Uh, but I have not seen posters across schools or across public places where it is continuously emphasized. Digital safety is continuously emphasized. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, we need to have, because children are the future of our country. So this has to be undertaken on a large scale. We have to have these public service announcements. Uh, as, as we declare that smoking is, you know, very dangerous. We have to talk about digital safety and how to keep yourself safe. And messages have to be positive. This is what I believe, you know, trying to scare. It's better to tell someone how it is okay to be safe than to try and show them, you know, if you are not safe, this is what will happen. Of course, something will happen if you're not safe, but the message has to be emphasized nationally, and it has to be done at a very large scale. So schools, colleges, you know, uh, residential apartments, everywhere, there should be these posters that keep talking about digital safety. That is the first thing. This would be one of my inputs. Uh, the second thing is that before we start to educate children, how many parents know how safe it is to be online? Most parents are not even aware of the issues that uh, you know what so when you talk about safety at the most they will tell you oh my child will talk to a boy or talk to a girl or talk to someone and you know that becomes the end of the uh, safety parameter however when you go on to youtube I, I don't remember the name of the channel right now there's this entire channel 
that has only videos of men who are talking to minors right on chat and they go to meet those minors and when they go to meet those minors of course the intention is sexual and uh, the channel sort of you know pretends to be the minor in question because people report these people and then uh, once they are caught most of these people are very uh, men from very well to do families techies educated folks so do parents understand do caregivers understand how many teachers are aware of the dangers of the internet so there has to be a complete training uh, module sessions programs etc etc lots of them for all levels i mean maybe different for each section but there has to be something for all of these people right and then the third is that despite all of this there is going to there are going to be challenges there are going to be difficulties there are children who will get in trouble all the time so what is our mechanism for them to come back we have no mechanism you know once a child is stuck in some trouble that child becomes branded for the rest of their lives ki tumne to aisa kiya tha you know you don't listen to your parents you are so and so so and so of course children will make mistakes so where are the safe spaces we have built for children who have already suffered something you know and you know that whole boys locker room you know one of the panelists yeah that's what it comes that's what comes right. to mind when you talk about that yes yes so see boys locker room is not something which is happening on social media this is something which is happening in real life they just took the whole real life experience and they took it onto social media right what happens to those boys and what happens to the girls that they talked about where are their safe spaces now these boys have to be rehabilitated there is no question of them going back and merging into society and then staying in the same manner because this is not an issue of social media this is an issue of a mindset this is an issue of their upbringing this is how these kids are they have just taken that side of it uh, sorry one last point i would like to definitely make is that you know gaming has also now come with its difficulties not only are there mental health issues gaming is also being used for all sorts of crimes so i think uh, my, in my list of priorities i would say that the most critical is to train the caregivers the parents the teachers etc everybody the adults in the life of the child and the second most important thing was will be to keep communicating this digital safety is mandatory it's mandatory it's mandatory you know as many times as you say it may not even be enough i mean you know despite all the tobacco ads we have we still have people who stand on the road and smoke so uh, i think we have to keep emphasizing and we have to open safe spaces for children who have suffered because if we don't do that it's only going to become trauma and it will get worse it will go where uh, you know thanks for so eloquently putting your points across uh, i i i wish we can use your uh, dialogues everywhere because we keep beating the drum of digital safety digital safety all day long and we're still not tired of it because of incidents like you and deepika brought up it it those are the incidents that um, made it to the line line that there are millions more that are happening every day um, and the boys locker in is just one example of those which is you know which it it just uh, uh, sends a jolt to all the adults and caregivers to wake up and recognize that there is a problem and they need to be better equipped so um, quickly coming to you uh, uh, dr rupinder uh, can you outline any specific points that you would like to put across before we wrap this up can you please uh, help dr rupinder uh, okay yeah ma'am i i would emphasize that all the stakeholders must take their responsibility that digital ethics must be inculcated in the youth as well as in the roots of the society roots means the children in their early childhood and the teenagers if we want them to prove to be the human resources in the near future so it is mandatory that they must understand their ethical values it is a part of good parenting and good teaching as well and it's uh, what uh, one thing i would tell you that in uh, right from the next month we have uh, started conducting the workshops 
in close consortium with csr we have planned an outline where we with your collaboration we'll be uh, making the children in the schools aware about the digital problems digital challenges and the responsibility to win over the challenges and and we have you know uh, we'll be having the posters in those educational institutions so that uh, it's it will be it, it will it won't be the one one time go that this is done and that is okay whenever they'll be passing by that poster or the those message they'll be keeping that thing in mind that that yes they have to abide by these responsibility that as a good citizen it's not that they are in uh, they are getting themselves away, away from the rapes and crimes that they should be uh, ensuring the healthy digital for themselves and, the, and for everyone who is uh, who is living in the entire globe Definitely. that is it thank you thanks ma'am and uh, divya ma'am points before we go away anything specific you would like to add divya be unmuted yes. please can i be unmuted please ma'am ma you are unmuted yeah so all uh, of it got said and uh, very well uh, i'm sure uh, taken up also we have all understood and i think uh, rightfully said that uh, children we cannot be we have to be doing it in a balanced way we can't put instill fear in them with regard to social media because uh, in the end of it uh, if they are barred from it they will really not adapt to this technology and they will be deprived of you know Uh, this important skill which is very important in the uh, future for them we have and the parent child who is supported adequately by the caregiver will definitely turn out uh, to use this present online experience today they may be at an entry level using this opportunities to do gaming but the same thing will transform into and develop their interest for using uh, internet in a more responsible manner and more useful manner for education for information and for other social online experiences so i think uh, yeah support constantly by the caregiver updating of the con uh, caregiver costly of their own skills and um, doing it in a balanced manner not instilling fear in the child definitely very very important so working closely with the children not uh, you know talking at them thanks ma'am and uh, dr pragya koshik if you would like to add anything to what you had uh, brought up since you work uh, with so many schools and colleges on awareness i think she got disconnected yeah she's here so uh, dr pragya koshik before uh, i think you joined we were uh, coming to you for any last points you would like to add to what everyone has said any specific things that you know we would you would like for us to note i think uh, yeah she is facing some problem uh, in her connection so finally deepshika we would like to come back to you uh, any points you would like to add since you are you work closely in the media and uh, as a parent as well it was uh, like um uh, enlightening to hear your views and thanks for bringing up those examples which you know uh, we've been uh, really waking up to in the past few years uh, how do we help our children navigate this and how can you know media be also of some help in um, enabling that see uh, from a uh, when when you talk to children or talk about children it is or for anybody the forbidden fruit is the most sweetest you know so if you tell them no don't do this the chances are that they will do it first they will do it on the sly so what needs to be done is that the response the onus of taking the decision right or wrong decision has to be uh, give put on them that they make the right decision therein is our responsibility in terms of media in terms of creating awareness there is our responsibility in terms of parents talking to kids about what is uh, what is right what is wrong like we are talking forever now about what is good touch what is bad touch please come back to me and tell me if you feel that anywhere you felt safe uh, anywhere you felt unsafe similarly we have to keep doing this like we have to create that safe space for them to come back if they if they come across a bad experience thanks so trust basically build on trust a big part of um, um, the trainings and the workshops and the education work that we are doing with parents is communication and trust and 
giving the onus like you said uh, handing it over to the kids and trust them uh, but give them the right tools to make the right decisions make those safe spaces like ekta said we've uh, noted down every single point that all of you uh, made today and we are very grateful for your time and the effort you made for us uh, thank you so much i think we are so like good on time now um, and very proud of myself to arrive to be able to wrap this up in uh, under an hour although like i said earlier i could go on and on and talk about digital safety digital safety like ekta uh, said all day long but thank you so much and i hope we can um, you know um, get more of your support in the coming times thank you and have a good evening everyone bye bye